guys. Happy Monday. It is I, your songwriting partner, your co-producer, and as always, your friend, Joe Seavey. Happy Monday again, guys. And Mondays is always uh, part of our uh, series that we like to call them the mechanics of songwriting. And what makes a hit song a hit song? Well, you know, that's like they say, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Well, beauty is in the ear of the listener as well. Um, <clears throat> what's one person's horrible song is another person's savior song. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, as every Monday over the weekend, I always listen to a whole bunch of like different songs in the billboards, top 100. <clears throat> um, every month they come out with a new 100 list. Um, a lot of the same songs are on that list and then new ones get inserted and other ones actually find their way out of the list, um, out of the top 100. And uh, Justin Bieber has a new album out called Justice. And um, he's our featured artist tonight, by the way. Um, and his song is called Die For You. But back to the, uh, the topic of the class, what makes a hit song a hit song? If you had to do like a music autopsy, let's say, <clears throat> you know, in the studio, when you hear a song on the radio, it's just coming out of a set of speakers. But in the studio, there's hundreds of tracks on there. You know, like the drums, the bass, the keyboards, the synths, all the vocals, all the layers of vocals. If you were like to take a song and strip away each track until it was just, I don't know, maybe a piano or a single synth, would it still be the same song? Would it still be catchy? Would it still appeal to a wide audience, you know? A lot of it has to do with what's on top. Or, you know, um, is it the lyrics? Is it the performance of the vocalist? Is it, I mean, what is it? You know, there's so many variables there that it's really hard to, <clears throat> you know, um, put your finger on exactly on what it is. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't really think it's, well, it might be the tempo, but not the beat. Well, the beat is, a, is important, but... Um, you know, when I hear songs basic just with a piano and a voice, there's a lot of songs that are out right now. In fact, on this Justin Bieber record, I listened to the whole album today, and there's a lot of songs with nothing on them. Just like a single instrument and him singing. Not a lot of stuff going on. I think people are... I don't want to say this. Um, I'm... I'm I'm just noticing a lot of more organic music is kind of creeping back in. Um, I think because there's only so much, you know, um, production Production has a way of dating itself. Really, it does. I can listen to songs from the early 2000s. I know they're from the early 2000s just by the production value of the song. Sometimes less is more. And I've been noticing that, like... Um, like the song Driver's License and things like that. There's just very minimal production because you're listening for the melody and you're listening for the interplay between the chords and the melody and the voice. And not a lot of things between the voice and the, you know, production sometimes can cloud things a little bit. I'm getting a little nerdy here, but... Um, <clears throat> We're, you know, we're talking about the song itself. Is it catchy? Does it, is it short? You know, a lot of songs now are short, very short. By the time you're in love with them, they're over. And then you're spending the rest of your afternoon hoping that you catch it again, you know? Um, and that's a great trait, you know, don't overstay your welcome. I always said that as a songwriter. Um, write something short, sweet to the point, catchy, full of hooks, and then boom, you're gone. By the time people are loving it, it's over. And then people are looking for it. So that's the uh, the school I'm from as far as, um, you know, songs and what makes them so attractive. But what makes a song attractive to one person is not necessarily, one size does not fit all. But these songs are on Billboard based on listens and views and rotation, you know? Um, and who get, who gets more views where, and, uh, you know, between all the music platforms like Spotify and, 
you know, all those, you know, all those music platforms and YouTube, which is most people listen to music on YouTube now. Um, so I think most people go to YouTube for their, you know, music. I know I do. I mean, that's the, my usual go-to, you know. Um, but yeah, the song that I'm listening to today and I'm featuring on this, on this uh, episode of what makes a hit song a hit song, The Mechanics of Songwriting, is Justin Bieber's uh, song. Let me put my glasses on because I can't see real, real great. Um, th like I said, this song is called Die For You, okay? And the song was written by, of course, Justin Bieber, a guy named Andrew Watman, Watman, Jonathan Bellion, Louis Bell, Dominic David Fike, who's also in this song as well. Um, he's also an artist, Dominic Fike, and he's got his own music out. You've probably heard of them. Um, and uh, this song is three minutes and 18 seconds in length. Pretty short. Um, the label is Def Jam S8 Project Schoolboy and RBMG, which is several labels. It was produced by Andrew Watt and Lo Lewis Bell. Okay. And it's brand new off of Justin Bieber's new record, which is uh, titled Justice. So um, I really like this song. It really, it caught my ear and it's got like, um, now this song, like I said, the other Justin Bieber songs on this album aren't as production heavy. This song almost sounds like a throwback to the eighties. I think, you know, people are taking a little, um, you know, the weekend, you know, the weekend, the artist, the weekend. Um, he's a, you know, a lot of his songs have an '80s kind of vibe to them, and I think that's been a big thing lately. I think people are, you know, the, you know, '80s comes and goes. You know, even in the late '90s, people were bringing the '80s back a little bit, and then it goes away, and then it comes back. Um, the '80s never really goes away forever. Um, there's always a new generation of people that heard about the 80s and the music and the good times and the fun that we all had when we were actually kids in the 80s. And uh, and so uh, it's a nice introduction to bring people into that kind of music. Um, so anyway, without further ado, this is Justin Bieber with Dominic Fike uh, singing a verse as well on this. This is Die For You. So here it is. Could kill me, you know I would die 
this could kill me You know I would die for I you die Yeah, I would die for I you I would die for you, baby guys that was a pretty cool song i love the uh i love the production um you know it, it's uh it's got like there's like i said there's like some 80s vibe in there you know a little bit of 80s vibe and uh yeah i really dug it and i love justin's voice and dominic's too um you know uh dominic fike got a great voice and i've been listening to some of his music too i'm gonna feature him on here uh soon pretty soon all right guys I hope you enjoyed this song, and I hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, the discussion that we're having about the song. That is all the time that we have for tonight. This is your songwriting partner, your co-producer, and as always, your friend Joe CB signing off. I love you guys. Be safe. If you haven't, get vaccinated, and I will see you guys tomorrow in the live Zoom class. We can talk about the song during that time. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Peace. Peace.